my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And what do we do? Well, we provide mentoring and training services for, for different mechanical engineering codes. And we provide equipment certification and re-rating services as well. We'd be pleased to help you. So let's continue with our slides. So before we dive into uh, API 579 by demand, I've received a lot of requests in the last year from our earlier sets to dive in. I really wanted to spend some time talking about the some of the methods that are used to classify um, the, the types of analysis being done. And and it's it's found in chapter four, general metal loss, and it's regard to component classification systems. And so I wanted to have this sort of a standalone video because it, it there's a lot of overlap as we'll see. It's uh, in the further into the presentation. You you can see how they use this you know philosophy to uh, determine the path forward to do analysis. So. Basically, what we have here is we have three classifications of components. They're called type A and B, or A, and there's type B, and there's a type C components. And th these components from the 2007 and 16 editions haven't changed too much. But if you look at uh, uh, type B, there's been a few changes. They've just basically reclassify things and apart from that they haven't done too many changes with with the with the uh, classification system chapter really begins explaining on a for one level that the component of the component classification definitions and to determine you know the level of analysis and so basically the type a components is when one needs to determine, you know, the uh, the thickness for pressure rising or for liquid filling in the case of, of, of a tank. Uh, type B is for major structural discontinuity, local reinforcement requirements. And C is, is uh, for components that really don't have a design code procedure. These are, these are uh, sort of general definitions. We'll dive in more in the next couple of slides. Now, as I alluded to earlier, the reason why we wanted to have this as a separate video is because the there's a lot of different parts in 579 that references these class component classifications, and and so when I did a lit literature search, of course, you know, part four, general metal loss is this is where the origin of these classes sh show up, but they also show up in part five, general metal loss. They show up in pitting corrosion. They also show up in high hydrogen blistering and in uh, hydrogen damage. They show up in part 12, dense gouges, dent gouges. And part 13, the assessment of lamentations. So what do we have here? We have uh, pressure vessels, which are cylindrical conical sections as per by the pressure vessel code section eight division one. And we have spherical pressure vessels and storage spheres. And we have heads, spherical, elliptical, and torsional would fall under type A's. We also have piping systems, but it's really for straight sections. And uh, the one that I've used this for is in B31-3. For elbows or bends without structural attachments, it can be used. And it can be used for storage tank shell courses. And the atmospheric one and the most common one example would be an API 650. Take a look at type B components 2007. It's interesting because um, you know I, I'm going to talk about the latest version. So they just have one group called type B, and it refers to you know structural discontinuities, major dis, uh, discontinuities, and uh, local where there's local reinforcement requirements, like say for example a nozzle re re reinforcement for area replacement calculations. 
we have a you know load conditioning geometry thickness flange design or we can use it for thickness interdependency between components let's look at type b components a little bit deeper so there's more it's the largest group by the way the pressure vessel tank nozzles piping branch connections we're looking at reinforcement zone on a conical uh, transitions. You, you can see how very specific they are, and that's so helpful when you're when you're doing an analysis, right? Cylindrical to flat head joints. We're looking at integral tube sheet connections, uh, which is a favorite of mine, and flanges, very commonly done. And uh, well, there's some really good examples that we can talk about in the near future. And of course, piping systems. Now, there's a section in 2007 called 4.433B3 um, that we can we can get into that as well. So, the piping system B components begins with the discussion that a type B systems apply uh, when there's an interact relationship between the component thickness the piping flexibility and the resulting stresses because you know if your pipe is more flexible then the stresses can drop and vice versa and the component thickness can have an effect so let's let's con continue with that equation 4.5 the straight sections of pipe where we want to consider this interrelationship so there is something called determining l using 4.5 and i'll show you the equation it's quite simple and and uh, this is this is the pro the procedure that is used so the q factor is from from table 4.5 which we'll get into us for a second but it has to do with you know the remaining strength factor as uh, described in part two of the of the code uh, and the remaining straight factors is typically based upon um, you know the, the code that's used for example in this in the most cases if it's ASME section 8 division 1 that would be 0.9 and then you would use the thickness ratio and you come up with your Q value so let's let's continue and take a look closer look so the piping analysis so we use the average thickness the mean thickness for the part and um, there's some future examples where we can look at you know determining that and so that's that table 4.5 and you can see from here uh, the remaining thickness ratio which is you know the 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 what's left over what's new and you know if a pipe is in pretty good shape then you get Q gets higher, right? And so in our case, we're looking at the allowable remaining stress factor, which is shown in part two. Uh, we can see from our value there. So if we have, you know, a, uh, you know, a stress ratio of point, say 0.875, for example, as shown here, then we can go across and we get Q is 0.493. There's, for B components, there's some specific rules on about elbows and bends. And bends are, um, you know, are pipe that's, you know, been bent to to the plastic state, and and uh, so the rules are similar. So in the, in piping analysis, we use the the average thickness of of the component, and then we use that to to determine the flexibility factor and the overall stiff, stiffness of the system. And then we can determine the stress intensification factor. So, you know, we can use a program like Caesar, for example, to, to determine these values. And we can use uh, B31J uh, to assist us. And uh, so we use those average values. Branch connections follow the same kind of thing with using pipe analysis. We, when we do our pipe analysis, we use our average thickness for our branch and header, and we can use that to help us determine the stress intensification factor. Now, there's an alternative method, 
it's for piping analysis. This is in this case you would use the minimum thickness, and in this case the what is cited that this would be used in as an example would be for localized stresses, where you want to find uh, you know an area where there's certainly a lot of corrosion or there's a lot of stress concentration in a specific area. Then you would use your T min. 2016, they introduced two classes of components, and one is called a B1 and a B2. And really, there, from what I can see, uh, there is really no differences. If you see, if you guys see a difference, then please send me an email because it'd be interesting. But basically, they just subdivided it to definitions a bit more to sort of really explain you know, the differences. So, you know, I, I agree with what they did. You the type B1 components, we can take a look at that. So it's not, uh, B1 components are not type A components, uh, but they're really A components with supplemental loads in, co in combination with pressure to determine the required thickness, okay? And, uh, you know, Pressure vessels and shells and conicals that are not type A's fall into this category. And then they go ahead and they say piping systems and this fourth, four, three, three, A, two that we talked about earlier about all those exceptions about stiffness and that. Um, we would do the analysis, but it's, you know, it's a non type A type system. So this is where we want to see the interaction between, you know, the stiffness and the stress. So B2, we're talking about design equations are not avail available to calculate T minimum based upon the pressure and loads. Okay, this is where we have a, an issue. And so, you know, there's really no design code uh, procedure available for doing that analysis. Look at some specific examples. The first one is pressure vessel nozzles tank nozzles and piping branch connections where we're, we're going by, you know, we're designing by rules. You know, that can also apply to really your enforcement zone of, you know, conical sections. It can apply to flanges, the cylinder to flat uh, head junctions would be considered as that. Integral tube sheet connections would be considered to be part two, uh, type B2. So let's lastly look at the final part, type C components. You can see when we go from A to C, it, it's an order of complexity. It's a smaller group than B. And it, you know, it's where, again, where there's a design equations are not available, where, where you can relate the wall thickness to the pressure and other loads. It, you know, it's very similar. There's no, no code design procedures to determine the local stresses. So you can kind of see that C and and the, the B are very similar, but you know they give specific examples. So they say the pressure vessel to head uh, to head to shell junctions would be considered to be type C components, and then there's the stiffening rings attached to the shell, and then there's the skirt to lug type supports on pressure vessels are considered C components. And lastly, the, the tank bottom shell course to the the, uh, the the bottom the junction, and you know where the where the stiffening is done there, that would be considered to be a type C component. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.